Welcome to the Tear Talk Podcast with author, coach, and speaker, Mashani Allen. Known as the Golden Scribe, Mashani has over two decades of writing experience, and her passion for the craft has given her the opportunity to impart wisdom, affirmation, hope, and confidence into many. Let's listen now as Mashani delves into topics that have impacted her on her Tear Talk journey and helped her discover the power of the pen. Welcome, 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 welcome. So glad to have you all join me on today for the Tear Talk podcast. Today's podcast, I think, is a very interesting concept And I don't know if it's something that many of us take time to consider, but I want to talk about inventorying your heart or the inventory of the heart. And, you know, this is something that I find myself doing, especially like right before birthday. My birthday is in eight days. And I think it's fair for us to take assessment of where we are. I think you've noticed that my podcast really asks you to do a lot of internal reflection and looking deep within yourself. And a lot of times for me, the looking can be through writing or the looking can be through conversation or the looking can be sitting and meditating on different things. Now we are towards the end of a whole physical year and generally in business, this is when a lot of businesses begin to take inventory. They begin to look at what they have. They begin to look at what they don't have. They begin to look at how much of what they have was sold quickly. They began to look at how much of what they have was sold slowly. They began to look at sales. They began to look at growth. They they take inventory. But when do we, as humanity, take inventory of ourselves? And there's a verse in the Bible One translation of it says, for the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Isn't that awesome? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. So it doesn't take us long, (laughs) if we're honest, to see what we are full of. Are we full of joy or are we full of pain? Are we full of peace? Are we full of confusion? Are we full of love or are we full of anger? Are we full of hope or are we full of fear? And I know that the list that I gave you, the terms contrast each other. And I did that on purpose Because some of us may not be full, but we may be half. We may have half fear and half hope. We may have half joy and 30% anger. But to me, I think that you need both sides of the list so you can do an honest inventory. You can't do an inventory of your heart if you only look at faith, if you only look at hope, if you only look at joy, and if you only look at peace. Because you still may have some anger. (laughs) You still may have some fear. You still may have some confusion. Um, You might have some disappointment. You might have some anger. You might have some pain. You might have some hurt. And my thing is, Honesty and transparency is the only way to honestly inventory your heart. Lying about your heart isn't going to help your heart get better. And I've really been on this thought process of refusing to live the lie. 
I think many times we we have standards that society has. We have standards that people have. We have these concepts and we can find ourselves following them, but they may not be our truth. And I remember having a conversation with someone just recently and I told them I refuse to live the lie. I'm not going to paint a picture so other people can feel comfortable if that's not my truth. And I was speaking with someone and I had given them an assignment. And a few weeks after that, I was taking a course about pain and peace cycles. And so I could become a certified instructor in this type of training. And one of the assignments that I had given someone, they actually have it as a part of this training. And basically what you do is you write down all the lies that you've ever heard and all the lies that you found yourself living under. And then you have another side or another page where you write down the truth. And I remember I was having a conversation with a young lady. And when I mentioned this process, that you could see that it really, it was a really challenging concept for her. But when you do inventory of the heart, you have to face the lie in order to live the truth. And I think I am just in a place of what some people would say is holy confrontation, where some things I just refuse to be a part of my life, to be a part of my mindset, to be a part of my future. I'm just not going to live a lie. I'm not going to live the lives lies that people want to paint. I choose to live truth. And that leads when you when you can get to that place, it takes you from freedom to liberation. There's a difference between the two. And I found that liberation is 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 a lot greater than freedom um itself and i just think that we some people have reached the place of just being able to just be completely honest and completely transparent and for other people they're just stepping on that part of the journey and becoming comfortable with it becoming comfortable with speaking their truth letting it be known when there's something that they don't care for or something that they don't agree with. And I know that can be a little challenging at first because no one wants to feel rejected. No one wants to feel um, resistance. No one wants to feel unloved. But at the same time, if you're constantly doing things to appease people, you will never get to a point of full freedom for yourself. So the question is, what has been flowing out of your heart this year? I know that ain't something you're going to hear on a daily basis. (laughs) And it's interesting because my best friend was asking me about my birthday because I haven't really said anything. And generally, I'm I'm over the moon, over the top, like uber excited. And I, I told her, I said, you know what? I am in such a place of thanksgiving this year. This year is different. It, it It's just hitting me differently. I am so thankful because of the work that God has done on the inside of me, the hidden things that people can't see, the adjustments that have made the healing that has come, the truth that I now live, I am in such a place of peace to where external things don't mean what they used to mean to me before. Not that I don't like it, but I am just so focused 
on the beauty of the woman that I'm becoming. I'm thankful for the work that I have partnered with God to have done on the inside of me. And I am in such a great place. And it means a lot to me because two years ago, I didn't even know this place could exist. And two years ago, I didn't know that it was a place that I could live in. But I've been doing inventory of the heart for years. And I can honestly say my heart doesn't look the same from one year to the next. And I see that as a good thing because that represents progression, that represents growth, and that represents maturity. Now, I can honestly say that when I got to the place of being honest with myself first, I can honestly say there were seasons or years, I should say, where my heart was full of offense. There were years that my heart was full of unforgiveness. There were years that my heart was full of pride. And sometimes I was unaware of all three. But making the decision to ask the question, what does my heart look like? Where is there fullness in my heart? Where is there still brokenness in my heart? Where is there still sensitivity in my heart? Where are the unhealed spaces of my heart? Where is there still brokenness in my heart? But also where is there joy in my heart? Where is there forgiveness in my heart? And for me, a lot of times I find this through my writing. Like you can literally have a whole journal entry on the inventory of your heart. And you can write down the different categories, the positive ones and the negative ones. And be honest with yourself about what you have, what you don't have, what is lacking, what is missing. And for some of us, what was never there that needs to be there. What makes our heart whole? Where is our character good? Where does our character need work? And how can we get the work done? For some of us, what helps with our inventory is having a mentor, is having an accountability partner, is having someone that you can speak to and say, hey, this is an area that I struggle with. I am purposing this year to be better in this area. Can you hold me accountable? If you hear these types of words coming out of my mouth, can you make me aware of it? Because I personally would say stuff that I didn't hear myself saying, but people around me would be like, you, do you, you realize, <laughs> you realize what you just said? What you just said contradicts everything that you are, everything that you believe and everything that you told us you want to do. But it was something in my heart that was coming out and I didn't even realize it. Or I would, this it was years before I used to do what I would call nightly reflections when I would read my journals from that particular day for every year. But since I've now been journaling since 2005, that will be a whole lot of journals to read. But, you know, I will be able to see through my writing where my heart was still broken in one area and then a few years later, I was seeing my writing where some healing had taken place. So that's why I'm such a proponent of journaling, because there really isn't anything else that allows us to really measure our growth and maturity consistently, especially when you write consistently. But even if you don't write consistently, if you make this a part of something that you do yearly, we've got the holidays coming up. We've got family time coming up. We've got vacation time coming up. If you set aside 
you know, a day or an hour once a year to do inventory of the heart. I believe it will be something beautiful that you could look back on years to come. And I think that we need this to see, you know, where am I growing? Where am I still needing help? Where am I getting worse? And where am I maturing? That is important, especially if you're someone who wants to work on your character and whose desire is to be better than you were before. So I just admonish you, for those of you who are willing to take that challenge, to take that challenge because society needs better people. (laughs) Society as a whole needs better people. So I looked up the definition of inventory and y'all already know I'm a word nerd. So the meaning of one of the definitions of inventory is a list of traits, preferences, attitudes, interests, or abilities used to evaluate personal characteristics or skills. So on your inventory of the heart, you can write down traits, personality traits. You can write down preferences. You can write down your attitudes, different attitudes you can have. You can write down, you can write down a number of things, but you want to be able to evaluate them, not ignore them, not lie about them. And don't fudge your numbers. (laughs) Be honest with what you see, because the only way that you will grow is through your honesty. You know, it's an interesting place when you do a lot of internal work. It's not something that a lot of people understand and some people refuse to embrace it. But when you, in in some words, make yourself a priority, um, it makes a world of difference, not just for you, but for so many people. Because it encourages others who are feared looking on the inside to feel comfortable looking on the inside. You can't heal from what you avoid. You can't get free from what you ignore. You can't get better from what you act like doesn't exist. So inventory of the heart is needful, necessary, and in actuality, it's mandatory for all of us. Again, it's not something that's really talked about. And if it is, it's not always encouraged. But for those who do it, it can make the world of difference. Think about it on your job. Most jobs, you have a yearly assessment, a yearly assessment. What I'm, what I'm sharing with you is something that is happening all the time, but rarely is it attributed to us personally about who we are as human beings, about our character, about our image, about our likeness, about who we really are in our core. And I personally believe this is something that needs to be the forefront. (laughs) It's like after you get your work inventory, why not do a personal inventory? Who doesn't like, it's almost like, well, I don't know if I would be the best example for this because my growth spurt was so quick in uh, elementary school. I was taller than my teachers (laughs) and my classmates because I grew so fast. But the image I had was, you, when when parents would measure their kids over the summer and they would draw the line and then they would have the child's name and then the next summer, sometimes the line, there would be a small distance between the line and then sometimes there would be a big distance between the line, but it was showing their growth. And I don't know if there are a lot of places in society that allow us to see our growth, not based on our work, not based on what we do, not based on how we perform, but truly based on who we are. (laughs) 
like who we are in our core, in our inner being, in our thoughts. Because people can be one way at work and a whole nother person at home or a whole nother person in society. So that's why your work assessment doesn't fully or may not fully correlate with your personal assessment because some people know how to turn it on and turn it off. But I think it would be great for you to know who you are, whether it's turned on or turned off, like the core, the core of your being. And the thing about issues of the heart and doing inventory of the heart, sometimes there's areas of our heart that we don't even know are there until we're triggered by something. And what may have triggered us in one direction two years ago, that same trigger can come, but we don't respond the same way. That's how we can see and that's how we can tell that work has been done. So even when you're doing your inventory of the heart, especially when you're dealing with what may not be a positive aspect of your heart, you may want to write down what triggers that, what triggers your anger, what triggers your jealousy, what triggers unforgiveness, what triggers fear, what triggers disappointment. Because if you can be able to say what the triggers are, then you can be able to put things in place to help you respond to the triggers differently. Like when businesses take inventory, they assess what caused this to sell, what caused this not to sell. What type of advertising did we use? What type of advertising didn't we use? So sometimes there were factors that caused the inventory to either do well or to not do well. And with our hearts, sometimes there are factors that cause us to have more joy or cause us to have less joy, that cause us to have more hope or cause us to have less hope. And if you're doing an inventory, you can say, this is, this is where my heart is. These are the triggers and these are the things that happened to me this year. I had a loss. I had a situation. I had a breakup. I was fired. All of those things, because I think you have to, in your assessment or in your inventory, I also want you to be fair to yourself because your heart gauge may be different this year because of the things that you experience. But what you need to know is that is not the definition of who you are. I think some people are afraid of terms and labels because sometimes when they have to write things out, they see that as definition and that's not what, what it is. It can just represent where you are right now, but it doesn't define you. That's, I want you to leave knowing this does not define you. It just locates you so you can know where you are. And from that place, you can get better. You can get whole. You can get healed. And you can mature, but being able to locate yourself matters because it's from that point you can make the decisions to be better. So when you do inventory next year, you can be able to measure whether or not that happened. And if it did, how, if it didn't, do you have more triggers or did something happen? I hope this tear talk blesses you. Because my desire is for people to be as healed and as whole as they can possibly be. But the only way that healing and that wholeness can come is from a place of truth and transparency. And many times it's hard to do that with people. So the first place that you can start is with your pen. Because remember, the paper doesn't judge. I look forward to seeing you all or hearing from you all. And I pray that the next time that you see an episode of Tear Talk comes up, that you choose to press play. Thank you for joining the Tear Talk podcast. 
You can learn more about Mashani by visiting MashaniAllen.com and register for her Power of the Pen for Grief webinar at MashaniAllen.com forward slash classes.